Welcome back to chemistry class. I am Pushatan Rao. Today I am going to talk on two chapters, stoichiometry and chemical bond. Let us begin today first with stoichiometry chapter. All of you know that stoichiometry is also an important topic for J.E. mains exam. It has a lot of numerical parts and so much of conceptual information also involved. The whole topic we can take from two areas. One is oxidation state, redox reactions, balancing of redox reactions. So this is one area. The second area is related to mass information, quantities information in terms of mass and volume, stoichiometric calculations, atomic masses, molecular masses, mole concept. This is how we can have two areas of stoichiometry. Let us start in some numericals, some questions from stoichiometry. The first question I am writing here 6 into 10 power 24 atoms of an element weigh 200 grams. If the element forms homoatomic, homodiatomic gas, then the molecular mass of gas is options given 20, 50, 40, 10. So let us see the question. 6 into 10 power 24 atoms of an element weigh 200 grams. If the element forms homodiatomic gas, then the molecular mass of the gas. When mass and number of particles is given, we can find out atomic mass. Reason? 1 gram atomic mass of any element contains Avogadro number of atoms. That is 6.023 into 10 power 23 atoms. If 6 into 10 power 24 atoms have a weight of 200 grams, 6 into 10 power 23 atoms can have how much mass? That becomes its atomic mass. So the first part here, <coughs> 6 into 10 power 24 atoms weigh 200 grams, 6 into 10 power 23 atoms weigh how much? That becomes atomic mass of the element concerned. 6 into 10 power 23 into 200 by 6 into 10 power 24. 6 get cancelled. This power I can cancel. So 0. So it is coming to 20 grams. Therefore, atomic mass must be 20. Since it is diatomic gas, diatomic gas means it should have two atoms in the molecule. Suppose if M is the symbol of the element, it should be represented as M2 as molecule. Since atomic mass is 20, so two atoms mass becomes 20 into 2, 40. So this becomes molecular mass. So molecular mass of that substance is 40. 3 is the right answer there. Let us come to the next problem. To prepare 0.1 m KMnO4 solution in 250 ml 
slash the mass of KMNO4 required is let us see the options first then we solve the problem the options given here one 4.80 gram 3.95 gram 39.5 gram and 0.48 gram it is a simple problem related to molarity molarity formula with weight and volume information w into 1000 by gram molecular weight into volume in milliliters because volume is given in 250 ml flask so milliliter volume and now we need to calculate weight so w is equal to m into gram molecular weight into volume in ml by 1000 molarity given for kmno4 is 0.1 gram molecular weight of kmno4 is 158 if you calculate from potassium manganese and oxygen atoms point of view it comes to 158 and volume given is 250 divided by 1000 so 250 four times four three times 12 38 6 times 36 point two means five times as 0.1 is further away it should be equal to 3.65 grams so this is the mass of let me check once again 6 3 times 12 38 so 9 times all so this is 9 times 39.5 so this becomes 3.95 grams so answer should be 3.95 grams second option is right answer Next question. Density of two point zero five m solution of acetic acid. in water is 1.02 gram per milliliter the molality of solution the molality of solution is the options given here 1. 14 mol per kilogram second option 3.28 mol per kilogram 2.28 mol per kilogram 0. 44 mol per kilogram this is a question where molarity of solution is given and molality is question let us solve the problem molarity meaning if it is 2.05 m meaning of that one is 2.05 mol solute in every 1000 ml solution molarity molarity meaning is number of moles of solute dissolved per liter of solution we say so one liter is 1000 ml 1000 ml solution contains 2.05 moles of solute 
whereas molality requires the number of moles of solute dissolved per kilogram of solvent. So therefore we require density. So density data is always useful to interchange mass to volume or volume to mass. Here volume of solution we have to convert into weight of solution. From weight of solution we have to identify weight of solvent so that we can calculate molality there. So now here 2.05 mole solute in every 1000 ml solution. Then mass of solution, mass is equal to volume into density. So volume is 1000 and density given 1.02 gram per ml. So this comes to 1020 grams. So 1020 gram is the mass of solution in which we have to subtract weight of solute so that we get weight of solvent. From the weight of solvent and number of moles of solute we can calculate molality. So now mass of solute, mass of solute is equal to number of moles into gram molecular weight. Number of moles already we have seen 2.05 into gram molecular weight. Solute is acetic acid. Acetic acid molecular weight is 60. So nearly it comes to 120 grams approximately. 2.05 into 60, 2 times nearly 120 grams. Thereby I can get the mass of solvent here. So now mass of solvent containing these 2.05 moles is equal to it is 1020 mass of solution minus mass of solute 120 that becomes 900 grams nearly. So now we need to go for molality formula. Molality indicated by small m is number of moles by weight of solvent into 1000 of course weight of solvent in grams. Number of moles we have seen just now 2.05 moles into 1000 divided by 900 grams the mass of solvent. So if you simplify this, this is 2.05 into 10 becomes 20.5 by 9. So 9 2 times 18 and uh, it is 2 times further a 2.28 molality weight. So this is 2.28 mole per kilogram is the answer for this conversion. So very important problem this is. In order to convert molality to molality, molality to molality, you require density data. Using that, remembering the basic uh, relation of these two concentration terms, we can interchange these values. Right. Let us go to the next problem. In a compound, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, atoms are present in 9 is to 1 is to 3.5 by mass. So by mass point of view there is the ratio of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen given. The molecular mass, the molecular mass is equal to 108. The formula is the question mark. Formula of the compound is the question mark. Options I am writing C2, H6, N2. Second option C3 H4 N Third option C6 H8 N2 And last option C9 H12 N2
here mass percentage, mass ratio is given rather and from that we need to calculate molecular formula. Of course when mass ratio is given, percentages are given, we can calculate empirical formula which indicates the ratio of atoms of all elements in the molecule. From empirical formula then we can go for molecular formula and let us see how to solve this problem. The three elements given here, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen and the mass ratio is 9 is to 1 is to 3.5. In order to get relative number of atoms, we have to divide the masses of the elements by their respective atomic weights. So in that case we get 9 by 12 atomic mass of carbon, 1 by 1 approximately for hydrogen atomic mass and 3.5 by 14 for nitrogen. This goes by 3 times by 4 times. This is 4 times. Rather this is 0 0.75, 1 and 0 0.25. So after getting the ratio of atoms, relative number of atoms are there, we have to divide all the values with the least value. So the next step is 0 0.75 by 0 0.25, 1 by 0 0.25, 0 0.25 by 0 0.25. So this goes by 3 times. This is 4 times, this is 1 time. Thereby we get the empirical formula of the substance concerned. So empirical formula is, empirical formula is C3H4N. 3 carbons, 4 hydrogens, 1 nitrogen. To find out molecular formula we have to identify N factor which is nothing but the ratio of molecular weight by empirical formula weight. First let us see empirical formula weight here. That is equal to carbon 12 into 3 36 plus hydrogen 4 plus nitrogen 14. So 4 plus 14 18, 18 plus 36 becomes to 54. Then N factor is molecular weight by empirical formula weight that is equal to 108 by 54 comes to 2. So 2 is n factor and if you multiply all the atoms in the empirical formula by 2 times we get molecular formula. So molecular formula of the substance should be C3 H4 N into 2 times rather C6 H8 N2 so that goes for the third option here C6 H8 N2 this is a problem related to empirical formula molecular formula calculation point of view let us go for another concentration term problem The molarity of a solution formed by mixing seven fifty ML of zero point five M. HCl with 250 ml of 2m HCl will be the percent. So two different HCl solutions are mixed here. They have different molarities, different volumes. After mixing the two solutions, what is the molarity of the mixture solution is the question. Options given 1.0 m, 1.75 m, 0.975 m and the last option given 0.875 m. We know that when 
two or more different uh, solutions of the same solute are mixed in different volumes in different molarities average we have to take so that average formula is m is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 by v1 plus v2 or whatever final volume if some water is also added that final volume we can write in the denominator so the first molarity is 0.5 and its volume is 750 plus the second molarity is 2 and its volume is 250 final 750 plus 250 so this simplification gives the answer there 750 into half so one half of 750 will be 375 plus 2 into 250 500 By this is thousand. So three seventy five plus five hundred becomes eight seventy five divided by thousand, which is coming to zero point eight seven five m. So the molarity of the mixture should be zero point eight seven five m. That becomes the fourth option there. Let us go for next question. Which is related to redox reactions. Which of the following is a redox reaction options given in two O five plus H two O. Giving two H N O three. Second equation given A Z N O three. I'll take some place here. We can solve each question separately. The second equation is A Z N O three plus potassium iodide. Giving A Z I plus potassium nitrate the third equation given barium peroxide bao2 plus h2so4 giving barium sulfate plus hydrogen peroxide and the last equation sncl2 plus hgcl2 giving SnCl4 plus mercury. So here the question is, which one is the redox reaction? Very easy to identify redox reactions from non-redox reactions. All chemical reactions that we observe in the nature are categorized into two. One is redox reactions. Second category, non-redox reactions. The simple concept is. In a redox reaction, both oxidation and reduction take place simultaneously. If no oxidation and reduction taking place, then it is a non-redox reaction. But how to identify the, that information, whether it is an undergoing redox reaction or oxidation and reduction or not? Simple concept is: in any redox reaction, there will be change in oxidation state of one or more elements. If there is a change in oxidation state of one or more elements, then it is definitely a redox reaction. If there is no change in oxidation state of any element, it becomes a non-redox reaction. So, in all the four cases, if we identify oxidation states of all elements, then we can identify which is a redox reaction, which is non-redox reaction. Here, oxidation of nitrogen is plus five, oxygen is minus two, hydrogen plus one, oxygen minus two. Here, hydrogen plus one, nitrogen plus five. Oxygen minus. Of course, you must be familiarizing with the uh, oxidation state concept rules you have to learn. Thereby, you can like, identify. Now you can see nitrogen is having plus five, plus five either side. Oxygen minus two, minus two either side. Hydrogen plus one, plus one. Therefore, no element is changing its oxidation state. It cannot be the answer there. Coming to second case, in silver nitrate, silver is plus one. Nitrogen plus five. Oxygen minus two. Potassium plus one, iodine minus one. 
इन सिल्वर आयोडाइड सिल्वर प्लस वन आयोडीन माइनस वन पोटाशियम प्लस वन नाइट्रोजन प्लस फाइव ऑक्सीजन माइनस टू सिल्वर प्लस वन टू प्लस वन नो चेंज नाइट्रोजन प्लस फाइव टू प्लस फाइव नो चेंज ऑक्सीजन माइनस टू टू माइनस टू पोटाशियम प्लस वन टू प्लस वन आयोडीन माइनस वन टू माइनस वन सो नो चेंज इन ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट ऑफ एनी एलिमेंट वन सेकेंड इट इज ऑल्सो ए नॉन रिलैक्स रिएक्शन नो चेंज इज ऑब्जर्व इन ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट फॉर एनी एलिमेंट दिस इज बेरियम पेरोक्साइड बट बेरियम ए सेकेंड ग्रुप एलिमेंट वॉट एवर कॉम्पाउंड यू टेक ऑलवेज यू शुड हैव प्लस टू बिकॉज ऑल सेकेंड ग्रुप एलिमेंट ऑलवेज दे शो प्लस टू इन ऑल देयर कॉम्पाउंड विदाउट एनी एक्सेप्शन देर फॉर बेरियम इज प्लस टू टू ऑक्सीजन टूगेदर शुड बी माइनस टू ईच ऑक्सीजन शुड बी माइनस वन बिकॉज इट पेरोक्साइड ऑक्सीजन वेर माइनस वन ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट वी ऑब्जर्व हाइड्रोजन प्लस वन सल्फर प्लस सिक्स ऑक्सीजन माइनस टू बेरियम अगेन प्लस टू सल्फर प्लस सिक्स ऑक्सीजन माइनस टू एवं हाइड्रोजन पर ऑक्साइड हाइड्रोजन प्लस वन ऑक्सीजन माइनस वन सो वन सेकेंड यू कैन सी नो चेंज इन ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट ऑफ ऑल एलिमेंट्स इन्वॉल्व देर फोर इट इज ऑल्सो नॉन एड ऑक्सी एक्शन सो द फर्स्ट टू थ्री आर नॉट करेक्ट मीन्स डेफिनेटली लास्ट ऑप्शन शुड बी द राइट आंसर बट वी हैव टू चेक इट एस एन सी एल टू स्टैनस क्लोराइड एस एन इज इन प्लस टू स्टेट क्लोरिन माइनस वन स्टेट मेरक्यूरी प्लस टू स्टेट क्लोरिन माइनस वन बट एस एन सी एल फोर दिस इज स्टैनिक एलिमेंट देर फोर इट इज प्लस फोर स्टेट स्टैनिक स्टैन एस प्लस टू टू प्लस फोर एंड मेरक्यूरी फ्रॉम प्लस टू टू जीरो एलिमेंटल स्टेट जीरो देर फोर दिस बिकम्स द रिलॉक्स रिएक्शन मेरक्यूरस मेरक्यूरी क्लोराइड फ्रॉम प्लस टू कंडीशन टू जीरो देर फोर इट इज अंडर गोइंग रिडक्शन एंड एक्टिंग एज ऑक्सीजिंग एजेंट स्टैनस क्लोराइड इज अंडर गोइंग ऑक्सीडेशन एक्टिंग एज रिड्यूसिंग एजेंट सो दिस इज द राइट आंसर देर दैट इज फॉर द आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ ए रिडॉक्स रिएक्शन देर राइट लेट इज गो टू दज मेनी प्रॉब्लम्स यू प्रैक्टिस the better perfection you get therefore try to involve yourself in as many problems as possible for you next question how many atoms are present in 1 mole of sucrose How many atoms are present in one mole of sucrose? Options: 45 into 6.023 into 10 power 23. Number two: 20 into 6.023 into 10 power 23. Third option: 5 into our gross number. Six point zero two three into ten power twenty three, and the last option, none of these. Okay. Sucrose formula we have to take. Sucrose is C twelve H twenty two O eleven. If you take one mole of sucrose, one mole of sucrose, it contains. 12 mol carbon atoms 22 mol hydrogen atoms 11 mol oxygen atoms so put together 12 plus 22 34 34 plus 11 45 so 45 mol atoms and we know that one mol is equal to 6.023 into 10 power 23 atoms so therefore this must be the right answer for that so 45 into 6.023 10 power 23 atoms. Right. Let us go for another question. Four point four gram carbon dioxide and two point two four gram two point two four liter. hydrogen at stp are mixed 
इन ए कंटेनर एंड द टोटल नंबर ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स प्रेजेंट सो प्रेजेंट इन अ कंटेनर इज अ पर्सन मॉल सो टू गैसेस आर मिक्सड अप हियर वन इज कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड 4.4 पॉइंट फोर ग्राम्स दैट इज टेकन एंड अनदर इज हाइड्रोजन टू पॉइंट टू फोर लीटर्स हाइड्रोजन एट एस टीपी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दिस टू आर मिक्स इट अ कंटेनर एंड वॉट द टोटल नंबर ऑफ मॉल इज प्रेजेंट ऑप्शन सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो टू थ्री इंटू टेन पावर ट्वेंटी थ्री सेकेंड वन वन पॉइंट टू जीरो फोर फोर इंटू टेन पावर ट्वेंटी थ्री थर्ड ऑप्शन टू मोल्स फोर्थ ऑप्शन सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो टू थ्री इंटू टेन पावर ट्वेंटी टू लेट एस सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम फर्स्ट वी नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई सेपरेटली द नंबर ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स इन इच केस देन आइड ऑफ द टू यू गेट द टोटल नंबर ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स फॉर कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड 44 ग्राम कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज वन मोल कंटेंस 6 इंटू टेन पावर ट्वेंटी थ्री मॉलिक्यूल्स सो फॉर 4.4 पॉइंट फोर ग्राम हाउ मेनी मॉलिक्यूल्स इट इज एक्जैक्टली वन टेंथ ऑफ दिस मास सो वन टेंथ ऑफ दैट वैल्यू शुड बी द नंबर ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स इट बिकम्स सिक्स इंटू टेन पॉवर ट्वेंटी टू मॉलिक्यूल्स दिस इज द नंबर ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स विद रेस्पेक्ट टू कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड देन विद रेस्पेक्ट टू हाइड्रोजन इट्स ग्राम मोलार वॉल्यूम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इन्फॉर्मेशन इज गिवेन ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फोर लीटर्स हाइड्रोजन एट एस टी पी कंटेंस सिक्स इंटू टेन पॉवर ट्वेंटी थ्री मॉलिक्यूल्स सो स्टैंडर्ड रिलेशन ग्राम मोलार वॉल्यूम रिलेशन वन मोल ऑफ एनी गैस इट एस टी पी कंटेन ऑक्यूपाइज ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फोर लीटर सो ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फोर लीटर्स इक्वल टू वन मोल मॉलिक्यूल्स एंड द वॉल्यूम मैंशन इज टू पॉइंट टू फोर लीटर्स देर फोर अगेन दिस इज वन टेंथ ऑफ दैट वैल्यू ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फोर टू टू पॉइंट टू फोर वन टेंथ ऑफ दैट वैल्यू बिकम्स सिक्स इंटू टेन पावर ट्वेंटी टू मॉलिक्यूल्स सो दिस मेनी मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ हाइड्रोजन एज मेनी नंबर ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड सो टोटल नंबर ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स टोटल नंबर ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स विल बी द सम ऑफ दिस टू That is equal to six into ten power twenty two plus six into ten power twenty two comes to twelve into ten power twenty two. Or I can write this as one point two into ten power twenty three by adjusting the decimal. So one point two into ten power twenty three. Second option becomes the right answer there. Neon has. Two isotopes, neon twenty and neon twenty-two. If atomic weight of neon is 20.2 the ratio of relative abundances of the isotopes is options given here 1 is to 9 9 is to 1 70% 80% neon has two isotopes 20 and 22 and atomic weight is always defined as the average of mass numbers of All isotopes of the element, as per their isotopic abundance. So now the question is, we need to identify isotopic abundances of the two isotopes so that ratio we can work out. 
here i writes the two isotopes neon one is 20 mass number other one is 22 mass number this is a mass number let us suppose x percentage of 20 mass number isotope is there and as percentage means only two isotopes if one is x percent other should be definitely 100 minus x percentage and uh, the average of these two 20 and 22 as per this ratio if taken out comes out to 20.2 so that we can work out x value so 20.2 therefore must be equal to 20 into x for the first case plus 22 into 100 minus x by 100 so that we can solve the x value so 20.2 into 100 becomes 20 20 equal to 20x plus 22 100 minus 22x minus 22x plus 20x so difference becomes minus 2x this difference becomes This side minus 2,200 plus 2,020, so it is minus 180. So minus minus get cancelled. X becomes equal to 90. So 90 percent of first is to do means 10 percent of second is to do as 100 minus 90. Therefore 9 is to 1 ratio should be the right answer there. So 9 is to 1 is the answer there. next let us take a problem related to balancing of redox reactions this is also an area you can expect let us take an example and work out how to balance redox reactions based on that how questions will be framed kmno4 under acidified conditions oxidizes for the sulfate to ferric sulfate itself reduces to manganous salt potassium sulfate mnso4 ferric sulfate plus water let us see this is one molecular equation potassium permanganate is an oxidizing agent under acidified conditions oxidizing ferrous sulfate to ferric sulfate and itself reduces to magnesium sulfate if a redox reaction like this is given we have two options to balance it one is oxidation number method ion electron method but for objective examination point of view always practice oxidation number method which is quick easier fastly we can complete compared to ion electron method moreover oxidation number method is useful to balance any kind of redox reaction maybe a molecular equation like this or even an ionic equation also i'll take out to this one ionic equation also let us see how to balance such ionic equations as well using oxidation number method there so first we need to identify the two elements to change their oxidation state and find out the mole ratio of the two species changing their oxidation state using that mole ratio first we have to balance all other atoms other than hydrogen and oxygen after balancing other atoms then we have to finally balance oxygens and finally hydrogens so let us see the change in oxidation state here for manganese is plus 7 here and manganese is plus 2 iron is plus 2 and iron is plus 3 and one point we should remember here the number of atoms changing oxidation state in the reactant side is important not in the product side if number of atoms changing the oxidation state in the reactant side is uh, more than one as many times you have to multiply the change in oxidation state so that we get the correct mole ratio there here there is no such problem because this is one atom only this is also one atom right side atom number is unimportant for us now from manganese point of view plus 7 value changes to plus 2 therefore decreases by 5 units and iron point of view plus 2 condition becomes to plus 3 so increases by 1 unit so now after uh, identifying the change in oxidation state you can see one value increases one value decreases the one increasing your iron point of view is undergoing oxidation acting as reducing agent the one which decreases undergoing reduction acting as oxidizing agent 
then we have to equalize the increase and the decrease in oxidation state by cross multiplication or multiplying with a suitable integer here if i multiply this with uh, one time this is with five times then this becomes minus 5 that becomes plus 5 now these two are equal these multiplication numbers are the number of moles in which the mole ratio rather of the two substances to undergo this redox change it means i can write 1 mole kmno4 is equal to 5 mole feso4 so here up to this level you may ask a question i can ask a question like this in order to oxidize 10 moles of ferrous sulfate how many moles of kmno4 required in order to reduce 2 moles of kmno4 how many moles of ferrous sulfate are required this type of questions for which you have to use this ratio okay that is first level question second level question using this mole ratio you have to balance the equation and where mole coefficients in the balance the equation may be the next possible question there let us write once again the equation so kmno4 plus h2so4 plus feso4 giving potassium sulfate manganese sulfate ferric sulfate plus water 1 is to 5 mole ratio only i said but not actual values this is the ratio that should not be disturbed One mole, one kmno4. If you take here, two potassiums are there, so we require here two moles of kmno4. When it is two moles required, we have to take this as ten moles. Therefore, I write here ten moles because ratio should not be disturbed. So one is to five, two is to ten. Ratio is same. Then two potassiums, two potassiums, two manganese, two manganese. I have write here two Mn. And iron point of view, ten irons. So here five, five into two, ten irons. And sulfates as such, if you balance, here are two sulfates, one sulfate, three sulfates, and fifteen sulfates. Fifteen plus two, seventeen plus one, eighteen sulfates right side. So here already ten sulfates are accounted. Therefore, it should be eight sulfate in H2SO4 point of view. Now sulfates are balanced. Sulfates rather in which manganese, potassium, iron are balanced. Outside sulfates only oxygen and hydrogen are to be balanced. Here you can see oxygens four into two eight oxygens, and all eight oxygens have to come from water, so eight H two, and coming to hydrogens eight is a sixteen, eight is a sixteen already balanced. So this is the balance equation where you may be asked mole coefficient. So just the identification of the mole ratio is the key point in this redox reactions balancing, so that you can comfortably do any such question related to redox equations balancing point of view given for you. Let us take one example of ionic equation and how we can balance it under different conditions. Let us see. Chlorine plus OH minus Cl minus ClO3 minus plus H2. So the importance of this reaction is it is an ionic equation, redox equation. Plus, it is disproportionation equation. So, disproportionation equation in basic medium ionic equation. How to balance? All ingredients are present for balancing this particular equation. A disproportionation reaction is that where a single element or substance undergoes both oxidation and reduction. Here, chlorine undergoes both oxidation and reduction. Therefore, one part is becoming into Cl minus, one part is becoming into ClO3 minus. This is under hot and concentrated alkali conditions. Chlorine undergoes disproportionation to form chloride and chlorate. So this is chlorate ion. Chlorate ion. The procedure is same. First, we need to identify the mole ratio in which part of chlorine undergoes oxidation and part of chlorine undergoes reduction. For that purpose, what I do, I take uh, another chlorine here. One for oxidation purpose, one for reduction purpose. This is zero into two atoms. Therefore, zero. This is also zero into two atoms, zero. First chlorine, let us say for chloride purpose, which is minus one. Since I multiply two times here, here also I have to multiply two times, so minus two. This chlorine, chloride, chlorine is plus five states into two atoms. As left side, I have taken two atoms, plus ten. So now first part of chlorine, Cl two to minus two, decreases by two units. 
zero to plus ten increases by ten times. So to equalize these two, we have to multiply this with five. This is with one. So the ratio between them is five is to one mole ratio. So chlorine to chlorine, five is to mole ratio. But the first part of chlorine is for chloride purpose. Second part of chlorine is for chloride purpose. That way only we have to balance so that we can get a perfect balanced equation. Five chlorine, one chlorine. Later we write this other ions OH, OHs, water molecules, etc. Five to the ten, so ten Cl minus ions. Plus two chlorines, two chlorate ions. So now we balance other element chlorine here, coming to oxygens. Three to the six oxygens. For balancing the oxygens in ionic equations, we have to take the help of water molecules. So this side there is no water molecule, therefore it is six H two O right? for oxygen atoms. Three to the six, six oxygens. So oxygen atoms are balanced. Balancing hydrogen in basic medium procedure is the deficient side. We have to add water molecules as much the deficiency of hydrogen and an equal number of OH minus ions in the opposite side. Now we can see hydrogen here six to the twelve hydrogens. So twelve hydrogens, no hydrogen that side. Therefore here twelve water molecules are to take and twelve OH minus here. Now I can cancel the six water molecules as water molecules are common to write six H two O. Now clubbing the information, five plus one six Cl two plus twelve OH minus giving ten Cl minus two Cl O three minus plus six H two O. In the whole balance equation, there is a common factor two, so you can divide the whole equation by two to get the. Always least ratio of atoms we have to show in the stoichiometric form of equation. So by dividing with two, three Cl two, six OH minus, giving five Cl minus Cl O three minus and three H two. So this is the balanced equation in the basic medium, ionic equation, and disproportionation. So I think this is going to help you. To answer any such question related to balancing part of equation. So these are some important areas of stoichiometry calculations problems. Let us do some chemical bond questions as well. Chemical bond, another important chapter where you have to understand the different types of bonding in molecules, compounds, ionic bond, covalent bond, dative bond. And ionic bond point of view, some areas are there which is more ionic in nature, which is more covalent in nature. That is one area. Further lattice energy relations. But in covalent bond, you have plenty of discussion where different theories related to uh, covalent bonds, like Lewis theory, valence bond theory, hybridization concept, molecular arcal theory. These are all important areas. So randomly, let us see some of the questions related to these different areas. Other than this, still you have resonance information, hydrogen bond, dipole moment. So big chapter, have a good weightage in the examination. So one has to concentrate on the chemical bond chapter as well. Let us go for the first question in this. Species having maximum chlorine oxygen bond order so chlorine to oxygen bond order maximum is in which species the person first one clo3 minus second one clo4 minus third one clo2 minus clo minus these are oxo acids Of chlorine point of view, the corresponding conjugate bases are written: perchloric acid, perchloric acid, chloric acid, chloride from chlorous acid and hypochlorous acid, hypochlorite ion. In the case of these ions, bond order can be understood from resonance structures. If I take ClO3 point of view, ClO3 resonance structure. Three oxygens are there. One, two, three. 
and one oxygen is having negative charge therefore remaining two oxygens we can write double bond and lone pair electrons we have to account for the reason total in chlorine has got seven electrons here 1 2 3 4 5 so five electrons are used up in making five bonds remaining two electrons as lone pair so this is the structure of the clo3 minus ion which is known as chlorate ion and in chlorate ion resonance structure point of view if you take this lone pair position i can rotate of course this oxide o minus ion point of view i can rotate that position here as well as here also means we get three resonance structures here and bond order is equal to total number of bonds between oxygen and chlorine atom by number of resonance structures 1 2 3 4 5 so five bonds by three here three possible structures because this o negative charge i can write for some time this oxygen this oxygen also totally three structures so 5 by 3 becomes 1.66 bond order then let us take the clo4 minus ion per chlorate ion this is per chlorate ion and in this case chlorine is having four oxygen atoms connected only one of them is having negative charge remaining three oxygens are double bonded double bond here and now again this ox oxygen the negative charge can be rotated on this oxygen on this oxygen on this oxygen totally we get therefore four structures so bond order will be equal to total number of bonds seven here by it is four structures possible so it becomes 1 point 30 means it becomes 75 so 1.75 is the bond order so you can see higher bond order in perchlorate compared to chlorate and clo2 minus clo minus will have still lower bond order because the number of resonance structures is less therefore our answer for this question is clo4 minus which has highest bond order which is 1.75 Next question. Which has highest dipole moment? So, question related to dipole moment here. Simple question. This is HF, HCl, HBr, and HI. The meaning of dipole moment is it talks about the polarity of the molecules. Dipole moment is defined. Mu is the symbol we talk as product of charge on one of the atoms making that bond and distance between the two atoms. So delta into L. So delta into L product is taken as dipole moment. Here in all the four cases, hydrogen is common issue. So it is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine point of view to check. Higher the electronegativity of atom, higher is the polarity. Therefore, this delta value will be higher when polarity of the bond is more. Therefore, HF with higher polarity can have higher dipole moment because this delta value is more for that. Next question. Select pair of compounds in which both have different hybridization. but same shape so shape is same but hybridizations are different you are asked to identify such pairs first one bf3 br f3 second one icl2 bcl2 
थर्ड वन बी सी एल थ्री पी सी एल थ्री फोर्थ ऑप्शन पी सी एल थ्री एन सी एल थ्री सो दिस इज द पेयर ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स गिवेन हियर फर्स्ट लेटर से हाइब्रिडेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो दैट वी कैन आइडेंटिफाई द क्वेश्चन वेयर बोथ मस्ट बी डिफरेंट हाइब्रिड स्टेट्स बट शेप शुड बी सेम बी एफ थ्री बी आर एफ थ्री इफ यू टेक बी एफ थ्री इट इज एस पी टू हाइब्रिडेशन ट्राइगोनल प्लेन ऑफ ट्राइगोनल प्लेन ऑर शेप बोरान इज अ थर्ड ग्रुप एलिमेंट ओनली थ्री बैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फॉर्म्स अ प्लेन ऑर मॉलिक्यूल बी आर एफ थ्री बी आर एफ थ्री इज ए टी शेप मॉलिक्यूल इंटर हाइड्रोजन मॉलिक्यूल टी शेप मॉलिक्यूल एंड इट हैज एस पी थ्री डी हाइब्रिडेशन हियर हाइब्रिडेशन आर डिफरेंट शेप आर डिफरेंट सो इट कॉन्ट बी द आंसर कमिंग टू सेकेंड वन आई सी एल टू आई सी एल टू इज हैविंग अगेन एस पी थ्री डी हाइब्रिडेशन एंड इट इज लीनियर शेप वेर एज बेरिलियम क्लोराइड इट इज एस पी हाइब्रिडाइजेशन लीनियर शेप सो दिस बिकम द आंसर बिकॉज शेप इज सेम फॉर बोथ ऑफ देम आई सी एल टू एंड इट इज बी सी एल टू दिस मस्ट बी द आंसर हियर दिन फोर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन the incorrect order of lattice energy incorrect order of lattice energy first one alf3 more than magnesium fluoride second one lithium nitride मोर देन लिथियम ऑक्साइड थर्ड वन सोडियम क्लोराइड मोर देन लिथियम फ्लोराइड फोर्थ ऑप्शन टिटानियम कार्बाइड मोर देन एस सी एल इन द केस ऑफ लैटिस एनर्जी कॉन्सेप्ट इज Lattice energy will be higher. Higher lattice energy we observe for ionic compounds, for small size and high charge. This is a general concept, and of course both for cations and anions. so higher the charge quantity of anion and cation smaller the size of anion and cation this lattice energy will be higher provided it's a ionic compound for covalent compounds we can't apply this aluminum fluoride is ionic magnesium fluoride is ionic we can see higher charge for aluminum al plus 3 whereas magnesium is plus 2 therefore this is right answer right order but he is saying incorrect order so it can't be the answer here this is right order lithium nitride lithium oxide lithium is common here so nitride is n minus 3 this is n minus 3 ion this is o minus 2 once again higher negative charge higher charge quantity therefore it also has higher lattice energy so that cannot be the answer there again sodium chloride lithium fluoride you can see charges in both the cases are same plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 therefore we have to rely on the size factor lithium size is smaller compared to sodium fluoride size is smaller to chloride therefore this is incorrect order in fact lithium fluoride should have higher value than sodium chloride therefore this is the right answer last option scn is a covalent molecule you cannot use this concept next question is on hydrogen bond the correct order of strength of hydrogen bond in the following
first one h2o more than h2o2 more than hf2 more than h2s it must be hf not hf2 second case hf more than h2o2 more than water more than h2s third option hf more than water more than h2s more than h2o2 fourth option hf h2o h2o2 h2s so these are the different molecules given basically dipole moment sorry hydrogen bond hydrogen bond strength depends on electronegativity and polarity okay that's it so hf okay hf is having highest hydrogen bond strength because hydrogen bond strength depends on the polarity of the bond which is again difference in electronegativity more the electronegativity difference more is the polarity so more hydrogen bond strength will exert so hf should have highest value followed by here h2o2 and water both are having same type of bonds but number of hydrogen bonds is more in h2o2 that way we can say h2o2 better compared to water and h2s finally least because sulfur is having low polarity there so this should be, should be the right answer for this question